the chronology of events that took us here, the effects of these people being people with each other. It's a place once defined a city by population, now a town. There's a dirty beach and the people we're about to get to know surround the beach. There are easy teens and there are beach goons. It holds tangled interpersonal situations and melodramatic or sentimental treatment. The gardens where things got out of hand, the steps where they sat and got lifted. Beach Goon Headquarters, warm February. The Beach Goons have been ravaging the land for the last decades. In the gardens outside, they harvest the fungi that takes them higher. But this year it was growing all around town and in amounts never before seen. No one could prepare it like the Goons, though. Skin temperature drink. Old recipe, much flavour. Laundry day, an unproblematic teenager. Average handsome and maybe in love. Not sure about love yet and what it all means. It reads articles on the introvert versus extrovert. It knows it doesn't want to become psychologist or any other kind of doctor, but maybe chef or librarian. Its average handsome teenage body is moving around in a room. The room is furnished and the teenager is growing. It's the biggest in the class, 180 centimeters and still growing. The legs and arms are growing the fastest. Mersad, the easy teen. Last night, Mersad had been telling stories in the gardens, making people wish they were sitting by fireplaces. Mersad had made an effort telling the story about how they loved each other and how the love wasn't given much word. Every considerate extrovert with crushes going in the other direction has once or many a time asked itself how thinking and reasoning must work differently in the introvert's mind. When a flow of thought is not interrupted by speech, when the mind will reason within itself before others are to hear or welcome to input, does this affect the life much differently? Breakfast would ground the day. Jameson had been lying slumber fat in the morning, thinking if they had what it takes to table a morning feast for two, or if a pop to the shop was on. The pillow mind reaches for the inside of the fridge to try to memorise what was seen in it last night. On a good day, everything can be made into a feast. Also, when love is the drive, 
when what you live for is to treat, feed and toast to your most special friend in the morning, to make promises over the set table of what this day will hold for you and how it can most smoothly run, it's easy. Jameson fell in love that summer, and so it became the year of breakfast. Beach goons. A pack of restless friends and acquaintances. The area surrounding the beach had always been known for its ill-tempered youth. There's a limit to how much heat a young person can take before laziness tips over into rage or hyperactivity. Raphael was a 20-something science genius who had been skipping class ever since he realised the local schools didn't hold any challenge for him. And so he started shooting the breeze with the younger dumb kids that summer, developing a new agitated persona. The gardens where things got out of hand. The first ever fruit body presented to an easy teen. A beach goon in love, out of the line. What you do when you fall, but to offer what holds the most beauty to you. To the one chosen, or shall we say picked. A rush of something more than gut. In it a formula, an opening for L, O, V, E. The gardens are stairs down to the beach. Dirty, presenting no holiday season, but all about dates. A nameless town takes care of no romance in gas stations, no looks exchanged at supermarkets, and all bars are shut down. The beach holds it all, rules no creature escapes if ever introduced to the norm of town. And here... Grows the fungi. April. Uneasy teens would start harvesting too. As most of them were new to the fungi and not always steady on the brew, trips would sometimes lead to paranoia. The arrangement of furnitures in their homes was also unfortunate in the heat of things and in the come down they would naturally stay close to the windows. TVs would be placed in the centre, and as most households in town only had the local channel, 
They would need to be lucky to find something that would go with the trip. But there were ways to find a place for daytime entertainment in the room of the shroom. In more disciplined teens, the effects could translate directly into music. Was the talk about what freshness this area brought into a certain scene of dark electronica of any meaning to the teens it involved? Were they aware how the world was talking about it? It's May. Raphael staring out would be how you see Raphael later, sometimes dropping lines of relevance, sometimes random, or whatever held their truth. Raphael the Undefined, the pioneer of Undefined, an exquisite child of Seth the Teen and Randall the Goon, the Romeo and Juliet, the first to cross over. They had been feeling each other in the dark since forever, but with Raphael coming out of it, it was no secret no more. The way Randall looked at Seth made the goons so weak at the knees they would bleed from their eyes of envy rather than pass judgment. Seth and Randall had already made it to the books as they would be seen, seen by all in the open, no story, no rumour but fact. Now, as the fungi had been passed from goon to teen, crossovers would become less rare, as the effect was always passionate. Though the spit production was of a different kind in the easy teens, as they were new to the fungi and what follows. Little shivers for approximately 20 minutes, and then a vision the vision individual to each. As we know now, there's not so much entertaining factors to be found in the nature around the area, but swamp. So the rush should go inwards when the mind is open to such. Nostalgia, sentimental values, longing for another kind of being, being cat, being nutria, feeling wobbly, feeling invincible wanting the swamp.
It's June. It's summer. It's holiday season. He was the youngest person they knew with a car. They didn't know where he got it from. If it was stolen or a present from an admirer, maybe. All they knew is that when he drove it into town, there was a wind of change. Holiday's posse. What was hiding under the forever tan skin and heavy eyelids of this to become local charm? Holiday's posse set a world record in no time spent, from being a stranger to becoming a local. From the day he arrived until the day when everybody knew his name, his face, his glow. If it was his jawline or if it was how he formed his sentences carefully, or if it was how he spread his love around town. For the pleasure and pain in every young local's heart, he would change the ways they would rise from their beds in the morning and how they would wear their hair. He was open, yet mysterious, in a way they had never felt before. He gave and took and switched positions, but always smoothly. Holiday's bossy was the talk of town, but still, none of them really got to know him. Holidays would spend the early days up in the old hotel, used as a studio by a group of experimental filmmakers. They had been hanging creepy around the beach, offering cigarettes and casting the stronger jawed kids to their project. Needless to say, he got the goods. You can turn this world around and bring back all those happy days. Put your troubles down, it's time to celebrate. Let love shine and we will find a way to come together and make things better. We need a holiday. Merced, the hopeless romantic, was the first to fall and want to be the one to get to know him on a deeper level than others. Merced wanted more than to wake up in that tan every morning. 
many a letter was written, letters full of thorough explanation. The problem was, Holiday is not having an address or a mattress of his own. Did he always sleep over? Did he sometimes sleep in his vehicle? Merced was loaded with these letters and needed a way to hand them to Holiday's. But how, if not in the ways of just another easy fuck? Honest treatment of a sugar-coated stranger. You feed it a burger before you put it to bed. But it's in the way you see it eat that you really get to know. This babe has never been ignored. Its fingers hold on as if all eyes on them. A mouth so receptive, a chew so steady. A line of pearls, a smile, but honest. Good function serves health. What about health is so charming? Mursad became his challenger, off the street, at the board. They found a connection. The pool that had been crowded last summer, the only off-beach place to cool down, was now in private hands. It had been closed up and was standing empty since the winter. No local was really okay with this, but they tended to emigrate rather than protest. Lonely pool, lonely off beach. What pollution the water washed in on the beach had been what the grown locals talked about over coffee for generations. This was the reason you would never spot anyone over 30 at the beach, except maybe an occasional hobo. And therefore the reason why the beach drew young packs, and as the coffee drinkers had it, how the pollution got to these kids' heads and fried them restless. We know better. The fungi and its effect was not yet known back in the coffee drinker's time. First, only a decade ago, the harvesting had started with the wild-hearted generation, those who you now know as goons. Jameson and her lover once got through the fence of the closed pool and with their feet dipped in the water, had a talk on the essential. Jameson was telling about this reoccurring dream, where a childhood friend had been opening up a taco stand next door, and would always push tacos on the passers-by, 
while Jameson was watching from the window. Those who ate the tacos would continue on four legs, walking like dogs and more randomly as if they forgot where they were going before. Jameson would go down to the taco stand and talk to the childhood friend about what was going on and on the way down to the street get eye contact with all the four-legged people as if they were really close, though some would be hundred meters away. The taco stand was never reached before waking up. Jameson said last night was the fifth time this dream appeared. Then they talked about celebrational value in modern romance. Different motives for making a toast. The chair you are offered is far away from the cake you rather want. But you do love the birthday child, though it is known under a different name. One of the highest ranking beach goons was Purr. He still wouldn't be seen with people outside the pack. Exceptions were made for holidays, or was it the other way around? Nuggety Ruggety, a whole market of the frozen delights a couple of kilometers outside. Holiday's car traded for favours. On a constant scroll for fitting emotions, much to tidy up, much to replace in order to roll. Easy teen in a beach goon's house. The rooms in which they pre-party. Purr is present. The wall is down. So there is Mersad showing some photos of the fungi the teens collected. Purr unimpressed, goes, you were lucky coming over such a fair share. Yes, but first there were these, Mersad keeps showing. Oh, those are true cups, Purr is laughing. Good we realise before we brewed them, Mersad says, and Purr agrees. Then we found these, Mersad continues. It's so great that the harvest is still on. We're going to be rolling the whole winter. Look at these fat ones. And then... But I know what you're thinking of it. Per, goon, unimpressed but still there, asks, What? Thing is, Mersad goes, I love it. 
and you think we're these kids just waltzing around not knowing shit about the true nature of these mushrooms, Mersad says, and Perz replies, well, the part which is picked and which is misleadingly called a mushroom is in fact only the fruit body of a larger fungus. Mersad says, that makes sense. The beauty lies in, Per is getting softer. How are these discs or tubers? They cling to the ground. Mersad walks away, conversation ends. Much halfway emotions or insecurity. Much to be seen in the dancing. Late summer sadness. Almost fall. Leaning back in the sofa, a change of focus. What is this? A voice of the unknown. Fear not, there will be guidance in the fungi. And what is really scary about darkness, when what it does is hiding all those news from you? What news? There will be news, the unknown informs them. First some, then more. They're coming for a reason, but you must figure out for yourselves. The beach will be able to host all of you, but first you must learn how to interact, like you have with each other. Stay in for a while. Stay and start to trust and wait and start to see. Back in the light, news might just be a pathfinder into the world of holidays, taking you away, taking you there. What washed up on the shore later shook up most goons. An unclear message exercising their late summer brain state. Per had a vision. It had some kind of business with them in the old headquarter. Face-hugging features on its way down unfamiliar and sandy tracks. The vision would be discussed in the packs, and after that it would start to appear in their dreams too. They would open up about these dreams in the new headquarter. The get-togethers that followed. Lil Scorp, still considered goon after stepping the game sideways, attending the fine arted academies, got hold of a housing where they would all gather, as it was elevated up far from the beach and had space for the teens willing to join.
With the fine art came the finer wine, and in this they would search some kind of comfort. No news, different music. must be what all that most beautiful behind on the beach was about. 2010. Was that bay on BS Beach? Of course it was. And inside my pen too? She feeling me sexing up on her then. That what she thought was a strange dream reappearing right before she dropped the bomb in December. An image in her brain so oppressed. My surfboard. My face smiling at her from in between her thighs three years back. My face and pain on base register twisted into her idea of J.C. Tubfun. Can we blame Queen Beyoncé for not admitting fully to her connection with the European dirty underground? September, and the climate is getting drier. Cup noodles had fed the easy teens for a whole summer. The complimentary drinks had been so ever-changing, the table of noodles had never put them off. Also, two cups of noodles cover 89% of the recommended daily intake of health for an average easy teen. Sadness in a year that passed me by. In time not handled, in the promises made. Sadness in my dog, how it transfers onto others. Sadness in how you could be leading an easy life, but how your best friend cannot. an evil gas and how every time it is relieved, I'm in for a new one. Sadness in a little place and in that you would not know where else to be. Sadness in the holidays you cannot have. Sadness at the beach.
Was it the arrival of Holiday's bossy that had brought the beach goons and the easy teens together? Or did it come with this year's good harvest of fungi? Without so much more to come. It was loud, but not outspoken. It was intense and in between the two of them. Mersad plus holidays, champions of the morning, their connection is steady. Many a toast is had, for though something evil might be growing inside Mersad, this does not keep them from partying. Christmas is coming. In the ways of the party, they would work with synchronization as a method to come closer and to gain control of the situation. Holidays would teach Mersad some moves. Mersad would try to shake off all sorrow as if there's nothing to it. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I think about it every night and day, spread my wings and fly away. I believe I can soar, see me running through that open door. I believe I can fly, I believe I can fly, I believe I can fly. Those who came with special skills had to be marked, a sign that this one was neither to be considered beach goon or easy teen, but something else not yet defined. With holidays marking, he was also given his new name. Max had a birthday, and the moon was full, naturally a peak in the room of the shroom. Intimate, early hours, where recipes were shared and noted in the book of Sire Guillaume. Mm -hmm. 
Mersad was finding family in Max. Samples were taken, but in the end, the patterns of relation was found on their tongues. Blood or no blood, in the effect of the shroom, they were all related. All asexual, and in the effect of the effect, they kept close to each other to make sure no one drank of the wrong water. Spring came with the topic of beautification, as the young ones would discover their shells in the effect. Some teens would step up and speak about how the beautification process should never be excused. They would speak of how beauty should always be pursued, for a shell to be desired is a shell to hold on to, and in this, as long as the mind does not get lost, love will follow. In the morning the finger is thick, and on the thickest of mornings the ring will stick. Mursad's autobiography started taking shape that Christmas. Life and work in a summer of news. Or how to please the young and innocent in a weird country. Welcome back to Sadness is an evil Gas inside of me Episode 2 The Gardener's Phone Call Good morning, Mursad. Good morning, Prince of Sorrow. It's that time again. You snooze, you lose. There you go. Breathe out, and all of that to come we promised you. Mursad is going about, switching from hot to cold and back to hot for good circulation. 
the most basic difference between teen and goon. A goon finding out about its days being numbered and it would book a flight to far away, spend its last money and put up a rave to the grave. A teen finding the same message goes about its habits, enjoying the daily, finding value in the last. Mersad is still the teen of easy teens. But this morning's shower reveals more as Mersad switches back from cold to hot. Nong Shim. I am... spicy. In a space as well. Hot and spicy tastes that even an astronaut enjoyed. Surprise, surprise. Who would have thought to have noodles in space? It is a number one noodle in Korea. If it's Chin Ramyun, it is possible. It is possible. It is also the most lovable noodle in Japan, China and America. It is number one noodle in Korea, the most favorite noodle in the country. It is also the most lovable noodle in Japan, China and America. Its popularity has grown beyond the worldwide and reached into the space. Now it's time to enjoy the taste it is a which has no border. Most favorite noodle in the country. Shin Raimyun. Meanwhile, Max is looking for a present for Mersad, something saying, we got another mile to walk. Something very basic? Something to embrace the very everyday in? Something comfortable? The gardener's phone call. A thorough, thoughtful gardener. Different phones for different calls. In the puzzle of days around the beach, much, if not all, comes back to the deals made on the gardener's phone. I mean, your brother's a dickhead. I mean, he's my boy and I love him, but he's just, you know, I mean, he's acting a motherfucking fool right now, you know? Hold on. I have a call on the other line. Yes? Mozart? Oh, hi. Well, there's basically not much of that left. You know, it's very off season. But you can come by later and have a look. Yes, that sounds fair. Okay, then see you later. And hey, Mersot, remember, in order to be free, 
one must give up a little part of oneself. If you hear clicking on the line, the interference will be mine. Max, you're running out of time. If the Amazon does not hold your love for Mersad, will them all? Mersad is running too. For what must be given up for freedom might be at the very edge of Mersad's reach. What stirs the spicy? What inhabits Mersad's very alter ego in the darkest popcorn scented seats? Episode 3 The Marine's Pastry Dry Season Body of Merced. Sunday. A fox wakes it up. What is this? Merced wonders. And the fox smiles. Trying to locate, hunting for water, Mersad explores. Something is calling. It's the voice of the unknown. Mersad, Prince of Sorrow. Here am I, says Mersad. You are on the right path. The corn is in season. No more. Mercer tries getting back in touch. But the voice remains silent. the right path want with the body of Mersad? Where is it going? What does Corn have to do with it? And where is Max? If he could only see this, so Mersad is taking a panorama for Max. But the dry land has no reception. Meanwhile, Max is busy getting his hair done by a marine. They met down at Café Tropical, 
where the Marine was eating the biggest pastry Max had ever laid eyes on. The Marine is known for his precise grip on the machine, and Max enjoys his old Marine stories, like the one about when the Marine and his <clears throat> roommate at the time got interrupted by the sergeant who broke into the room after they had been with each other and said, I smell a woman in here. Well, he certainly smelled something, but it wasn't a woman. <laughs> okay, well, where did I leave off? Um, on the dry land, Merced finally catches a ride back to town and is being dropped off at the big crossing. A budget room hosts the sleepless night. Zap, 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 zap. Body of Mersad. Zap, 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 zap. You are on the right path. Monday and Mersad has a hard time getting hold of beer as pretty much every shop in this part of town is owned by the old goons. Body of Mersat moves on. Dry season. Thirst for a brown bag. The four-legged doesn't judge, and Mersat finds peace in watering the dog. Waltzing all the way down to Sunken Garden, miles away from the big crossing, thinking the pizza faces might know something about this corn in season. Ending up with one slice for the growing hungry and one slice for the shrinking sad. Pressure increasing in a body with no key card. It's a long walk back to the room. Nightlife is driven by the scent of flesh. the last time this body felt easy? Is the voice talking dent, sweet, pop, yellow, bi, multi? Something hungry is eating its way through the long lost easy prince of sorrow, dying on the road to a future in sticky sheets. Flashbacks to the fungi and how the packs learned not to fear that summer, but wait and trust. Mersad knows fear can block the vision. One has to be open-faced in order to get fucked in the mouth. And so Mersad will leave fear and listen to the unknown. Wait and trust and welcome the new season. For body of Mersad is body of more. Sweat and constant hunger. Something's about to pop as the corn of the cob. To make room in the body of Mersa, the easy must be put to sleep. Crème de la crème à la Edgar.
Wednesday, coming of age story, refreshments. This sleep was longer than most. Body of Mercy getting vitalized. Hungry for partying and a heart that beats heavy for this recharged heart knows that Max, wherever you are, it's your birthday. The dirty beach. The garden where things got out of hand. The steps where they sat and got lifted. It's all coming back to mind and it comes with a sense that Max is still around. Mersad sends another text. In fact, Max is close. Recharging too. Taking some time off the Marines. Redeeming gift cards at the land of flying cuticles. Treating that glow. A single moment of true sadness connects you instantly to all the suffering in the world. Looking for company, people creatures everywhere, but out of reach unless the finger is sure. A finger must know what it wants. The corn is in season. All eyes on the body of Mersad. You smell like a movie theater on Saturday night, said Sally. And no shame in that. You smell like a date. And the good part of a date, when you're still nervous, curious, and just a little ashamed because you ordered the extra large size popcorn and it turns out your date doesn't like it salty, so you have to finish the whole thing yourself. Teaming up with the street smart creatures of the night, Body of Mersad. Wednesday, Marine Headquarters. Max had a dream about a dark and narrow room where the only source of light was coming from a microwave popping a bag of popcorn. Convinced that this means something huge and big, Max heads out to find Body of Mersad. It smells differently. Once the teen of easy teens, Merced is not yet leaving glory. A power nap more than a meow meow, more than a nipple. Now with a new scent, the body of Merced hosts the after party. And the voice returns. Merced, body of more. And Mersad replies, Here am I! Happy hour at the dodo. Hurry.
frozen margarita, two for one. Parallel Street. The agave puts the past months into perspective. The noodles might not stay in space forever. In the course of the second drink, Max will have replied to Mersad's text. He tells about how a pack of Marines took him in, how he got a manicure for his birthday. He tells about the dream and how he woke up today knowing that it is time they meet up. They should return to the beach. The chronology of events that took us here the effects of these people being people with each other. Would these cuties join for the last happy hour? Nice day, confidence. Brown bag and optimism and an aura photograph telling how the left and right brain is in harmony right now and this could be used as an opportunity to act, meet up, go hard, and find back. Red represents the blood. But does Max know what he is in for? Body of Mersad presents The Age of Young Corn. Episode 4 The Age of Corn
I got all the juice on the street, bitch. Real life, real life, real life, true religion, true religion. real life, real life. New Gucci, new Gucci, real life, real life, real life. A hundred K, 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 real life, real life. On two G stuff right now, real life, real life. Young Corn with the breath of corn. You make me It's amazing cocaine. What the fuck? Of course, it's amazing hey. cocaine. Hey, honey. Wait a second. Where are you going? Hey, wait. something special for you. Yeah. Don't be afraid. So here's Max. A little blue, actually. So he goes, Fear. Look inside me, and that's all you'll find. Oh. Why don't you tell me a bit about yourself? Well, I woke up one day. I looked into the mirror and saw that my eyebrows had grown worried. See the trees over there, Max? Shivering in the blue sky. The simple mysticism of a windy day. It's over. Don't lose me now. I got something special for you. <laughs> On a scale from 1 to 10, 11. No exception. But Max goes, nah, I don't know. Conscience is a nuisance. A fly. A barking dog. If you don't believe you have one, oh. <laughs> what trouble can it be to you? Wait. The back of your knee. Do you feel how dry it is? Remember the times when masturbating still made the sweat run out of them? When did it start? Simply allowing events to unfold around us without taking control. Weight of Christ. It's the complete lack of resistance his body offers. Case and sensitivity and capital I S M. Sniff my finger. Come on, sniff my finger and tell me it doesn't smell like your girlfriend's sweet, juicy snack.
When someone has rejection from their mother and father, their family, they, when they get out in the world, they search, they search for someone to fill that void. Because their real parents give them such a hard way to go, they look up to me. Max is waking up under the sun. Young corn spots him and goes, Hey sexy, my corn, your ass. Young Corn beckons Max over with that infamous index finger. Max obeys. He is carrying a poppy seed cake. Young Corn asks, Weißt du nicht? Mon Makdum. And goes on, Come on, let's go to my place, watch a movie. Back at Young Corn's place, things are getting real. Your pussy is glued to a building on fire. I paint my mind just cause I'm alive. And if you see me roaming the hillside, won't you come along? You might think this virile pony only lives off corn, but the fact is that there is a thoroughly thought through, well balanced diet behind the constant boner of young. The aphrodisiac hour takes place every day in between breakfast and lunch, and here we are at lunchtime.
Max wonders if Young Corn watches a lot of these foreign movies. Young says I watch a lot of different stuff as long as it has a decent rating. Max wonders if Young has heard from Mersad, but Young doesn't seem to know what Max is talking about. So Max wonders what Young's hand is doing inside his pants. And Young wonders why Max's penis is so cold. Max asks what Young expected. A hot chorizo? Young says Max has no reason to be nervous and tries to assure him that all good things are yet to come. Max tells Young he is not nervous but that his conscience is conflicted. Young says conscience is a nuisance. As Max reaches for the last popcorn, Young is already on the way to pop some more. Exiting, Max's mind can't keep up with Max's body. Is it escaping because young corn will never be a Mersad? Or because the seasoning is wrong? How a body of blood, once so familiar, can take such a turn gives Max a slight nausea. Yet he cannot really let go and a curiosity remains around the popcorn scented perv as he escapes into the night with a tight grip around the bowl. Pop, pop babies like star Mercedes grow to feed our hungry void. Young's desire might not find home yet, as the desired is no man's toy. Mersad, body of more, feel the corn pop, blood your old friend will find back in. Though you're dirty, your touch is gentle, and does one not try, will one never win.